All right, about a month ago, I made a video with Randy on the CJ7 by Axial, a really compelling vehicle because it looks great. And, but the problem is it's so popular that you're like running around crawling with the same vehicle with all your buddies, right? Yeah. Just like in the one-to-one -one scene, you wanna personalize and customize it. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. How my good buddy Randy just customized the heck out of his uh, CJ7. So what is your overall vision, Randy? Uh, you know, my vision was uh, my buddies. You know, mm -hmm. we, you know, they both have CJ7s. You know, they're running on 40s and 42 inch tires, and and so the whole that whole Rubicon scene is kind of what I pictured when this this new model came out. And it's it's it seems like it's a hit because there's so many variations mm -hmm. of the same Jeep. But uh, so for my spin, I just I just kind of thought of the Rubicon, and and I thought about how I always seen magazine clips where people are taking kayaks and canoes out there on top of their jeeps right. and they're having to wheel to you know buck island and then just go out and fish and camp right and so i was like you know and and so i got sick and went and got a canoe and right. you know killed the time with just building a nice. canoe. so and, we're going to tell you about, about about five or six of the key upgrades that randy went through to make it what it is and we'll have a lot of running video right so let's start with the most obvious upgrade the canoe yes and some fishing pole what you got um so like i said it was just you know i got sick and so i had some time on my hands and i just thought about like i said the image that i was going for so i picked up a canoe it was on amazon there was a company back east that makes these and they go by scale uh -huh. like you know 12 scale 10 scale and so it's a it's a balsa wood canoe that you would have to Ooh, assemble mm -hmm. and uh, it's 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 pretty overkill for just you know this but mm -hmm. but it was it was fun and i think it was just you know a unique um accessory that i could i right, added so right. so do you know how much it weighs was it um it's balsa it it's, weighs nothing it weighs it nothing weighs for nothing. as big as it is so that, yeah think, that's yeah. huge if you know balsa then you're not yeah. killing your performance right away so uh how much did it cost and uh what did you do to personalize it did you paint it um yeah so you you assemble and, a, and i'll show you you can you assemble it all piece by piece it, it's pretty daunting oh, i mean wow. it's not it's it's like it's a lot to it didn't do. come like that huh no unfortunately <laughs> um like i See, said that's I, why I asked. but it's it's very detailed oh um, my god yeah like i said i had time to kill man so i i just i just went to town on it wow and so just painted it and then stained it um, it is beautiful yeah it came out actually really like i said i think it's a little way overkill and for what, and what do you think what was the retail and how many hours do you think you have that in that thing? Um, it took me a couple of days just, mm -hmm. you know, on and off, letting the glue dry and such. Um, I don't remember. It was a little bit pricey. Over 100? Uh, no, no. Okay. It, but it was, I think, over 50. 30, 50 bucks, okay. something like that. Right on. Um, I don't remember exactly. Right on. And, uh, I had to throw a fishing pole in because, um, so I just, I took the bamboo skewer and just a uh, paper oh my clip. God. And I just built a little a, it's a, fishing pole. It's got a reel. Yeah, I mean, you, know, you have a canoe, you got to go fishing, right? So <laughs> I had to throw the fishing pole in there. And uh, so that's that's that was the biggest uh, accessory that I just kind of made the made wow. the car or the concept I wanted. Right, and from there you got to fill the you got to fill the bin, right, or the the the, the back. And it looks yep. like it was, it was deep enough, so it looks pretty pretty yeah. realistic. So again, yeah, I just I just thought about my buddies. You know, you know when we we go out there, they have these jeeps, and you know there's not much room for them to store their stuff. So mm -hmm. you know I just loaded up, which which was what I pictured when we were out there, and that's you know a cooler, your 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 a recovery gear, yeah, a toolbox, sleeping bag, your your bags for your clothes and tents, and a couple I see blankets. A Coleman. Yep, little uh, Coleman. Coleman stoves. It's yeah, awesome. So I had some just three D printed stuff I had left over, uh, or from the other uh, builds I did. So I just kind of brought it over. Uh huh. And uh, and like I said, I just I just kind of remembered seeing where my friends' rigs are just stacked up with all their belongings. Right yeah. now, these uh, jerry cans were are they stock or are you? Uh, so I did. I, I I again I, you know, went to the three D CAD three D printer and I I made up a little jerry can carrier uh, for the back. Okay. So, because the back looked kind of plain. Yeah. Uh, just to kind of look That's empty. That's true. Yeah, this thing finishes it. Yeah, so right. I just, I figured, you know, again, just the essentials to go mm -hmm. out on a trail like that, you need to bring everything with you. So I just right. thought about, well, we need to put fuel somewhere. Now that you added weight, you probably experienced a little bit of performance. Yes. Hanging hanging with the people with similar cars. So well, how did you solve that? 
Uh, so I just, you know, the go-to is just adding weight, low weight. Um, so first thing I did is I just got some brass uh, rings for the beadlock wheels. Mm -hmm. uh, just some random Amazon uh -huh. uh, type. And just only because, you know, I kind of have somewhat of advantage of machining them down to fit. Right. So I added some brass rings. And I think you I, have uh, pit bull wheels, right? Yeah, and, pit bull wheels. I don't think pit bull makes am uh, brass rings, so you were able to make yeah it was able to make them fit, fit. Uh -huh. and then i got the pitbull xl tires which i've always been beautiful lucky tires with huh? yeah they, yeah, they're they actually look perform the they perform very well too oh really and yeah i'm actually pretty impressed with how much uh they grip mm -hmm. and then uh and then i just add the brass uh brass knuckles brass knuckles uh, to the okay. axial front axle so weight uh, on all four wheels which is yeah. the cheapest weight i think you could you could add in the lowest yep and then uh, brass knuckles, so a little more on the front than the rear. Yep. And then uh, how did the suspension work out? You know, um, so so one thing I noticed, you know, the early Bronco, uh, it seemed like, you know, I followed the trend and I and we went to the direction, you know, Vu and, and uh, Eric, myself, and a few uh, people I've seen um, as reference, you know, everybody threw on that uh, sway bar. Yeah, on the Axel SCX-103, yeah. the early Bronco. Yeah, the early Bronco version of the, you know, the same chassis. Same and chassis. So, so I, you know, we, we went out, I, I got that all set up. We were out there wheeling them. And I just, I just felt that that sway bar was a little too much. Like it, it would, it would fall short when it came time to compress the one wheel when you needed it, especially mm -hmm. when you're high uh, side healing. Yeah. And so I just, I was just, I didn't want to do that to this. And I, and like I said, that the sway bar was kind of, questionable because I just kind of seen where there's a moment where I'm side healing and I was hitting an obstacle I'm right at that threshold of tipping yeah. over and I'm going up on over a rock and instead of that rear one tire compressing yeah it would push me over every time yeah and so so when I looked at this I started realizing that the spring rate seemed to be okay it just it had to do something with, with the leverage yeah. the leverage on these springs uh -huh. And so what I ended up doing is I spaced out the rear shocks uh -huh. and sprint coilovers to try and reduce that leverage that body had. Right. So this is your spring rate. Yep. You can stiffen it. You can thicken the shocks, but you're affecting a lot of other stuff. But what Randy's talking about is is this this part was a little too easy, right? Yeah, way too easy. So uh, and that I believe it's it's your roll center. And uh, you you look to solve that by yeah, and I just spaced them out on the top or the back. Uh, both. So I spaced uh, them out equally, and okay. so that way I basically uh, took away that leverage. Yeah. That that roll center had. Exactly. Imagine, and, just imagine if your shocks were like this narrow, then all your weight will just tip you over yeah. on any difficult spot. So what he did was he put the shocks like this, and it, it, it seemed to help. So it seems a lot more stable. Now I did put sixty weight oil um, in the shocks. Yeah, a little to help with that. Yeah, I but, think uh, Axel's hot on thirty five. Yeah, as stock, so sixty. Uh, it helps it climb as well. Yeah, and so so far, I mean, it's things. Uh, I mean, it can crawl. I, I mean, I'm I'm impressed with what its ability, especially having yeah all this stuff in yeah. There, so that would be uh, the best reward when. When you go up against a stalker that looks really light, then you outcrawl him. <laughs> yeah, and I gotta, I gotta compete with Vu, and he, his rigs perform, and yeah, and he, he tunes, and he, he tunes them, but he slams them to the ground. <laughs> yeah, and I'm more of like, you know, I want it to look real. Yeah, it has he, to. Yeah, Randy's all about the, the, the proportions, the, the height, everything has yeah, to be perfect. Yeah. Do you have a uh, up motor upgrade and servo upgrade? All that yes, stuff? that that was a must. That was mm -hmm. the first thing I did. Was definitely uh, so I removed. I, I put in the Fusion Pro. I had to uh, mm -hmm. put in my uh, Spectrum um, uh, receiver. Mm -hmm. Kept the stock servo because I noticed it wasn't actually that bad. Really? Uh, I you know of course up the voltage seven point four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and, that's uh, an easy upgrade. You up the voltage on your yeah. Fusion Pro. And power the servo a little more. Haven't had really any any really issues. I mean, I do get some binding, but it's really just crammed into yeah. you know a, a tight well, spot. But uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, even with the early Bronco, I have still have that stock servo at that voltage. And again, the winch is always my saving oh, grace. Oh yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I always, you know. Yeah, uh, that's an RC four wheel drive winch. Yes. How is yeah. it controlled? Uh, through my through the radio. Through the radio. Uh, there was a little um, again. I mean, I hate to always say Amazon, but it's always my go to. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. 
little well, wireless Amazon controller. Well, yeah, it's a uh, yeah. There's a little a little cheap controller, winch controller. I plug yep. right into my receiver. I just activate a channel, and then I'm able to control the the winch through the radio. That's so cool. That's so yeah. cool. Our last upgrade is really cool. The driver, the driver, <laughs> right? The the personalized driver. Yeah, because you don't want to have you know five Marty Rick flies or you know some you know if you want Batman, Robin, whoever's driving your vehicle, that's fine. But there's not really that many choices if you think about it, with movie figures that are available, especially right. in eight inch and, and seven inch characters. And sometimes so, you don't like a movie character. You yeah, know, you're like yeah. A, you're like a. So I came across uh, ClassicTVToys.com, and it was cool because they offer seven and eight inch figures, but there was also a feature that they offer where you can have your face and head printed for that seven, eight inch figure. Wow. So I was like, man, I, I, I mean, it's a little pricey, I'll admit, uh -huh. but how often are you able to find a figure that's you? Exactly. I mean, granted it's in a Jeep and it should be in a Bronco for me, but yeah, you know, this is fine here, but yeah, it's it, so I was I reached out to them, and I ordered a figure. I took a picture of my face, and they created. You don't have to my scan driver. your face, huh? Just no, photo. just three photos: your your front and the two sides. Mm -hmm. And but I will say, if if you guys are going to them and request a figure, um, I did find out that you have to request the ninety percent size uh, figure head to fit proportionally to that body mm -hmm. uh, I ordered the normal size as usual and it was a, just a default but the head was enormous for the 8 inch body it just wasn't proportional it was too big uh, it was their body it was their body and it was the head for that body 8 inch uh -huh. but the bed the head was just way too big so their proportions are a little off he was, yeah he was so I reached out to him and we they offered me the uh, uh, 90 100 percent 95 percent and 90 uh-huh and so right away I was like let's do a 90 percent on their body yeah. and I reached out to him so they said if, if you're gonna request it and you want the proportions that we look but for this, yeah uh, request for a 90 percent or a 10 percent reduction in head in size head. okay wow so, and it does look like you huh <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I didn't get the bald spot, which I'm happy with. But, <laughs> yeah, they yeah. gave you more hair. That's yeah, cool. which is awesome. Pretty darn good. Gave you a little beard action. I think it's one of the Vigos I actually like finished as far as the overall yeah. concept of it. Uh, but yeah, I, I think if anything, maybe some sliders. Uh, only because I'm adding weight down low. Oh, right. Um, mm -hmm. And that would probably be it. Uh, right. You know, maybe a front bumper. But that's about it. As far as the cage or anything else, I, I think where it is, the way it is, is, yeah. is, is, is I'm happy with Yeah, I think that's a real testament to Axel. Yeah. You know, what yeah. they did with a stalker, you know, a, a, a master builder saying, it's pretty darn yeah. good already. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, you could, yeah. you could met, 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 metal tube everything, but it's, you know, you're, you're getting just an incremental benefit. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm happy they, they came out and they're starting to come out. Well, I shouldn't say starting, but they're, you know, we're having more and more choices of different models of rigs out there. Yeah. Right on, Randy. Sweet. Congratulations. Yeah, thank Wonderful you. Wonderful rig.